was the most savage storm in centuries, with winds howling at over 100 miles per hour. Some people said it was like living through the Clyde Bank Blitz all over again. The low pressure developed in the Atlantic, moved towards Scotland, and then we had those very strong gusty winds. The strongest winds came through during the early hours into the 15th, and that was of course when we had the big damage across the country too. Well, I was 13 when the hurricane came. There was absolutely no warning whatsoever. In these days, there was nothing at all. Just, we heard the wind getting up. It's safe to say there was a very strong jet stream crossing the Atlantic. That would have been driven by very cold Arctic air, meeting tropical air coming up from the south. The jet stream has picked itself up and the low pressures got caught in the jet stream and undergone what we call explosive cyclogenesis. And what happened in this storm, it was a perfect storm for the central, central belt in southern Scotland. The alignment of the winds was just so that we got some really strong gusts. It was clattering about, a lot of clattering about, but people's windows were blowing in. And there were families where they sat in the hall all night or under the kitchen table because they were so worried um, that something would happen that would cause injury. There were power cuts across the city. Chimneys collapsed, causing massive destruction to people's homes and in some cases, fatalities. Trees fell over the country. It was absolute chaos. Well, you've got to remember the winds gusting over 75 miles per hour. You're talking about hurricane force winds, and we all know what damage a hurricane does in America. And of course, the buildings back then weren't, uh, weren't kept up as, as well as they are now. On the 15th of January, 1968, the central belt of Scotland woke to a scene of utter devastation. Winds had battered the country the night before with sledgehammer force. The winds were so strong that they'd caused an immense amount of damage. Over a quarter of a million homes were damaged, hundreds of people were injured, and 21 were killed. It was the worst natural disaster to hit Scotland in the 20th century. In the morning going to school, I think the buses were all quite delayed because there was a lot of debris, so much debris, roof tiles and trees overturned, bins everywhere, fences up. It was, it was quite a state, it was awful. But we didn't realise how, how bad it was until we heard that people had died. And that was really quite something. That was awful. Hurricane Low Q caused Scotland massive wounds, which would take a long, long time to heal. It made 700 people homeless and caused about 30 million pounds worth of damage, much of it from old chimney stacks collapsing. In the morning, my mum said there's been a lot of damage done. If it was freezing, it was January. There was holes in the roof, there was windows were blown out. It was, I think, um, all these families and, you know, power went off, the power went off. I don't know how the hospitals managed. In the basement, the police believe four bodies are still lying. Things have changed dramatically since, in the, since the late 60s. You've got to think about the infrastructure, of course, of the way the city is, the way the transport network is, uh, the way the government respond to things, and the way the Met Office put their weather warnings out. Everything's improved so much in that time. People heed warnings an awful lot better. Social media. It's so easy to get information out there within seconds now um, if something's going to happen, which of course we didn't have in the, in the 60s to get, uh, to get the information and warnings out so quickly. A quarter of a million houses were left, you know, and instead of taking a few months to get it cleaned up, it was two years and a lot of money. Such a slum Glasgow at the time, the worst in Europe, that they were then forced to act and to, to give people decent housing. The hurricane turned out to be a wind of change. Realising that many of the old tenements were unsafe, building regulations were tightened to make Glasgow a safer, more modern city.